Creating fictional plants, fantasy herbs, and magical spices are awesome ways to introduce different flavor, pun intended, into your world. But how do you build plants that make sense? Stay with us, it's time to light up the forge. This video is tremendous. Greetings and salutations. I'm Janet from World Anvil, and today we are talking about how to make plants that make sense, even if they're magical. Tip number one is food. What are they eating? So plants don't have a massively varied diet, of course, but there are a few things that are crucial for most plants in our world. And if your plants aren't getting these, how are they surviving? Most plants photosynthesize, so that means that they're taking energy from the sun and turning it into sugars that can run the machine that is the plant mechanism. Most plants also rely on nutrients from the soil and water in order to survive. There are some super cool plants from our world though that don't quite fit this bill. Air plants like Tillandsia can draw nutrients from the air with special leaves. There are plants that need only water, like spider plants. Or how about parasitic plants, like the corpse flower? This big old ugly flower, so-called because it smells like a corpse, doesn't waste energy making leaves. Instead, it burrows its roots into another plant and sucks out the juices. Blip, 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 blip. You can also consider carnivorous plants, like the Venus flytrap. And there are some plants that are carnivorous that you wouldn't even think about. For example, did you know that tomatoes, or tomatoes, are carnivorous? Their hairy stems can trap insects, which then die and enrich the soil with nutrients. Fantasy examples of weird and wonderful plant nutrients include the bulbous violet from the Tome of Beasts 2. These guys secrete acid that literally liquefies their prey. Then they just stand in the gooey remains and suck it all up. Gross, but super cool. Tip number two for fantasy plants is environmental development. How do they survive? So you've figured out what your fantasy plant eats, but let's talk about how it survives. Plants, just like monsters, face threats from their environment. They lose water through their leaves, and too much water can even cause them to drown or go rotten. Plants in dry environments often have waxy leaves or spines to prevent some of that water loss through their leaves. So that's something to think about if you're creating desert or arid environment plants. And windy environments can also be a challenge, partly because it makes water loss even more prevalent, but also because the plants can simply be blown away. And yet, plants survive in some of the most toxic environments on Earth. From mangroves that survive in saltwater swamps, to the plants in Lake Usarika in Japan. That's a lake of 3.5 pH. It is extremely acidic. And yet, plants and animals still survive there. So whatever the biome, make sure that you have introduced ways that your plants will survive it, because that will give them really interesting quirks and make them feel really, really a part of that environment and world setting too. Tip number three is defense. How does your plant protect itself against things that want to eat it? It's an eat or be eaten world out there, and uh, plants can't run away like most of us. So how do they survive? Some plants grow spines or thorns to prevent grazers from trying to eat them. It's a very effective deterrent, particularly if you find one in your sock. And there are other plants like nettles, for example, which literally inject you with poison or acid or some other kind of irritant. This is a great way to tell large animals to back off and do not eat me. And on the other hand, there are plants which are fine for animals to touch, but poisonous for them to eat. Consider tobacco, which produces nicotine, and coffee, which contains caffeine. Both of these are created as poisons, or insecticides, so that things wouldn't eat them. Of course, this drastically backfired in both of those two examples. But if you can't grow spines and poison seems like a bridge too far, how about disguising yourself? These guys are called lithops. Cool, right? No, they're not stones, they are plants. They grow in Africa, but they disguise themselves so nothing eats them. There are even plants which have learned to disguise themselves as more poisonous cousins, in the same way that a hoverfly looks like a wasp. Things will stay away from them and not eat them, even though they're actually quite delicious. I found two completely awesome examples of fictional plant defenses as well. 
The first is Pixie's Umbrella, which, when it senses danger, throws itself into the air and spins away to try and run away, essentially. And the second is the Shift Shroom. This magical mushroom is actually delicious, but disguises itself as a more poisonous cousin, and can even metamorphose. I think that's pretty cool. I want to be able to do that too. My fourth tip for creating fantasy plants, magical plants, and all that good stuff is reproduction. So we've talked about what your plants eat, and we've talked about how they defend themselves both against the environment and against would-be predators. Let's talk about the birds and the bees. Not to put too fine a point on it, but plants want to get fertilised, and then they want those fertilised seeds to travel as far as they possibly can. It's called seed dispersal, and the way that plants manage this is one of my favourite things about real-world plants, as well as fantasy plants and fictional plants. Some of the common ones you see in our world are spinning seeds, or floaty seeds, which use air in order to spread over long distances. There are also seeds which are sticky or spiky. Those are designed to lodge in an animal's coat and then be carried that way. Some plants use water as a way of dispersing their seeds to get them to new locations. Or how about the most delicious one in the book? Fruits are designed to be eaten so that animals will poop out those seeds far away with their own little package of fertilizer. Or how about my favorite one, ballistic seed dispersal? It's exactly like it sounds, guys. Plants literally fire out their seeds over a wide radius, which is super fun to watch unless you're in the firing line. I also recommend that you check out Cordyceps fungus. I'm not going to go into detail here on this video because it is quite horrific, but do look it up. It's a super interesting and horrific method of seed dispersal. And speaking of which, there is a very cool fantasy example of this called the Ophio. This takes the idea of cordyceps fungus spores, which are mind-controlling, to a whole new level. The fungus forces infected victims to travel to strange places, to new planes, all to spread the fungus further and wider. Creepy? Super cool. Tip number five for creating fantasy plants is don't forget the non-traditional plants. So when you're creating your fantasy plants, a lot of us think about flowers and small herbaceous plants, but there is a whole vast variety of plants out there which are super cool and you can use to make your world super cool. Remember, trees, ferns, grasses, shrubs, moss, seaweed, water plants, and even things like colonies of plants, such as the big colonies of shivering aspen, are all super, super cool plants that you can introduce for more diversity and wonder in your world. And of course, you could even go beyond the plant kingdom to explore mushrooms, lichens, toadstools, fungus, algae, and so many other cool plant-like things that can make your world awesome. And make sure you don't forget about the mushrooms, because they're fun guys. I think on that terrible pun, it's challenge time! Your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is Describe an unusual or extraordinary plant species which survives in one biome of your world. Remember to detail how the plant survives there and what it's eating, how it defends itself, and how it reproduces too. You'll be using the species template on World Anvil, which is packed full of prompts to help you develop everything from humans, elves, and dwarves to trees, ferns, and mushrooms. And uh, check out content trees for showing how your plants evolved from other plants to create a whole planty tree. To submit your weird or wonderful plant prompt, then uh, follow the URL in the description or stick around. It'll be on the screen in just a moment. And uh, make sure you read other people's entries if they've made them public. There's always somebody doing something awesome on World Anvil. Please share your favourite cool plant fact in the comments below. I love reading your comments, but I especially love it when you share weird and wacky facts with me. Please like this video if it was helpful or if it made you think, and subscribe for more world-building advice and world-building tutorials. I'll be back next week with another video, but in the meantime, grab your hammer and go world-build. Lichens, mushroom, toadstools, moss, and fungus. Lichens, mushrooms, toadstools, moss, and fungus. La la la. Lichens, mushrooms, toadstools, moss, and fungus. La la la.